If you loved old and divorced Han Solo, if you loved old and failed Luke Skywalker, well, then you're gonna love old, depressed, and failed Indiana Jones. Really? We're starting to see a pattern here with Lucasfilm produced projects, don't you think? Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny is the movie you will expect from Kathleen Kennedy, but also the movie you will expect from the director of Logan. In this movie, Indy is also weary, battle-worn, grappling with his own mortality, and a bit of a Debbie Downer if I'm being honest. But the good thing is that Harrison Ford's old charm manages to pick through when he is not being his new grumpy self. So is a movie about a sad, lonely Indiana Jones a good movie? It is not bad to be honest, but it isn't great either. It is very entertaining because of its action scenes. Some of them are very innovative and feel truly fresh. The highlights are the train scene against the Nazis uh, towards the beginning of Act 1, and also the subway scene and the parade scene towards the beginning of Act 2. And also, this being a James Mangold movie means that the production values are excellent. It truly is a world-class production. The location seems vast and the places look crowded and full of life. Mangold uses creative camera work to enhance the narrative and create a visually engaging experience. The scene with the reflections on the plane windows that bookend a flashback scene was Chef's Kiss. The fun and very long opening scene is a flashback to 1944 with at the age Indiana Jones fighting Nazis at the very end of the war. As you will expect, ILM did an almost magical work. The technology has improved so much, but it isn't all there just yet. Split seconds reveal the trickery and add to that that the voice of Harrison Ford sounds like an old fourth? Well, the illusion breaks. Not sure why they didn't de-age his voice, they did this with Darth Vader in the Obi-Wan Kenobi show and it worked great. And every Indiana Jones movie has a MacGuffin, usually find in the title. And this movie's MacGuffin is the Dial of Destiny. And this is a device that was created by Archimedes to conquer time. The search and fight to get a hold of this device kickstarts the events of the movie and help us introduce a new character to the film that is called Helena, played by Phoebe Waller-Bridge. You stole it. Then you stole it. And then I stole it. It's called capitalism. So Helena is terribly miscast. Someone has to be a really big fan of hers because she keeps finding her way into Lucasfilm movies. She is presented as a femme fatale that can seduce a gang leader and that can beat many a man in a fight. But let's be honest, do you believe Phoebe Waller-Bridge can do all that? Her character presents many flaws of modern female characters. She outsmarts the protagonist, it's rude and mean towards him, and displays abilities that are never explained. She is just as good at what he does, and that's it. She can be great in, and I believe will be a very divisive character among viewers of the film. So now I have a big question to ask. What was the point of this movie? Surely they felt there was a need for nostalgia and people wanted to see Indy back in action. And that's my whole point. People do want to see Indiana Jones back in action, but do they want to see him at his worst? Do they want to feel pity for him? Is that what the movies were about? James Mangold did it with great effect with Logan. Jacqueline Kennedy tried with Han Solo and Luke Skywalker, and the results were very divisive to say the least. Harrison Ford, well, he just wanted to play himself, and he has become a very grumpy man. I feel that the creators of this film want to manufacture conflicts within the character so that this can become a more interesting story in their eyes, but it feels contrite and it has become a trope now. Can storytellers create conflicts that do not ruin the happy endings from previous films? Surely there must be a less cliched way of going about it. But let me stress this out, this is not a bad film, it is just an okay one. It might be better than Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, it might, but it's in no way better than the original trilogy. This movie has competent direction, in fact very good direction, it has a phenomenal score by the master John Williams and it has pretty good action scenes, however, I'm not sure this is enough to make a $295 million movie, one of the most expensive ones ever to make, to make it like a real success the way they want. I don't feel like new fans are gonna be uh, driving in droves to the theater to watch this, but fans of Dr. Jones will sure not want to miss it. So those are my thoughts in the movie, but I want to know what you think. Have you seen the film yet? Let me know in the comments below. As always, my name is Hector Navarro and I'll see you on the next one.